Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to the first episode of the year 2023 and it's only right for us to start off the new year talking about some TBR. I have always been more of a mood reader and so I've never really had a proper TBR before but for this year, I want to change that. I want to be a little bit more accountable for my reading and at the same time, I kind of want to build that reserve bank for my Dramani fanfiction and so welcome to my 2023 Dramani fanfiction TBR. And so to start off our Dramani fanfiction TBR list, I have two titles or fanfictions that I'm currently reading right now. The first one is Amor Vinces Amia by Twin Flame Blue. This is a story about Hermione finding out that Ron has been cheating on her for the past two years of their relationship. And Harry and some member of the Weasley family has known of the affair but decided to keep it from Hermione. So she has to find support in a more peculiar group of friends. Um, Hermione and Draco has dated in the past and now chances, twist and turn, will make them reunite and we get to see how they rewrite their story or continue writing their story from that point on. Um, this is a giant piece of a story actually. It has 288, 120,000 words. It has 32 chapters with a lot in the plot line. Um, I have already gone through 12 chapters of the 32 chapters so far and to be honest with you guys, I have to put the story on hold for a little bit because unfortunately this is not one of the stories that keep me on my toes and keep me reading. But I had planned to come back to the story. I did not want my first read of the year to be a DNF. But I will have to update you guys on the progress as I go through this. <laughs> Next on my TBR list, I am also currently reading this story. And that is Warp and Stray by Kiyono Miko. I think that I have read and loved pieces of work by Kiyono Miko before. So it doesn't come to me as a surprise that I am so in love with this story. This is a story about an anime game, <laughs> Draco. He is a ferret. Cousins in this story and through twist and turn one again fate bring them together um, we get to see two souls kind of finding each other mending each other learning how to love learning how to feel with a person who is most unexpected this story has a little bit more of a manageable length in my opinion it has uh, just a little bit under 120,000 words has 31 chapters i have gone through 21 of those chapters so far and i know that i will probably finish this story in the next couple of days because of how much i adore this story the character building in this story is just top notch not just draco and hermione but harry and the other side characters are just full of flavor full of colors and it just makes the reading experience super super fun i have stayed up until 3 a.m last night reading this story and i have snickers i have laughed out loud so much but at the same time, I have feel so much with this story as well. So I think that I would definitely recommend this story even though I am not even through with it yet. It may just be my first 5 star read of the year. But stay tuned for that in a later update on this channel. <laughs> Next, we have Meet Your Match by Morgan Mercy. This story is a post-war story where Draco and Hermione unexpectedly, surprisingly, share a mutual friendship with a muggle. And this muggle friend is trying to play matchmaking for her two best friends, for the people that she loves and she cares about, not knowing that these two people has a lot of package to unpack, has a lot of history behind them. And so we get to see how Draco and Hermione kind of navigate that sticky situation. They didn't want to lose their friend, of course, and they didn't want to reveal to them that they are magical. And so we get to see how their story turned out from that point on. This story, once again, is a more manageable length, in my opinion. It has just a little bit more than 120,000 words, 26 chapters. This, unluckily, is my 2022 DNF fanfiction. Not because I did love the story, but I was reading this story in a very busy time of my life last year. And when I had the time to come back to this story, the part that I have already read kind of faded away already. And so I just had to start off fresh once again. And I am really, really looking forward to finish this story, actually. And so I am definitely anticipate reading this story in a, the near future. Next, we have another one of my 2022 DNF. This is for an entirely different reason, but we have Measure of a Man by Inada22. I doubt that you have not heard about this story before because in my opinion, Measure of a Man by Inada22 is among the coolest kids on the block with Germani fanfiction. This is among the most well-loved, the most well-read, the most well-recommended fanfiction in the whole fandom. And so I doubt that you have not heard about this story before. Um, the synopsis of this story gives nothing away and to be honest with you, I don't think I can do a good job at summarizing this story because I do believe that there is a lot to read in this story. 
This is a giant piece of work, just short of 600,000 work, 42 chapters. So of course, this is not going to be your one sitting type of reading. I have tried reading this story and I think I have gone through four chapters so far, but the slow burn is so slow for someone so impatient as myself. But talking about New Year's resolution, I want to be a more patient reader this year. I have a really, really bad habit of just DNFing the story, just you know out of the blue just randomly just because i don't want to carry on with the story anymore and sometimes i feel like i have missed out on so many great stories this one included and so i have to put it on my tbr for this year a lot of you guys have been in my comments recommending this story and so i know that the decision to give this another shot is not going to be a bad one but i just have to learn to be a lot more patient with my fan fictions and this one will teach me a whole lesson and I hope that it will be one of my 5 star reads for the year because I do actually have a lot of great expectations for this piece of work. Moving on, we have a Rizzo story. You guys know how much I love the Dragon Brides. So we have Love in a Time of Zombie Apocalypse. This also has been recommended to me by a lot of you guys. And because I love the Love Rizzo and the Dragon Brides, this has kind of always been on my horizon, but I have never really got around to read it because does Rizzo traumatize me with the Dragon Brides and the others of her work? So the way that I categorize Rizzo story is bittersweet. So you never really have the, an entirely happy ending with Rizzo, I think, in my opinion. And so I'm kind of traumatized that my lovebirds never get to be together, never get to be happy and alive. And in fact, Love in Time of John B. Paulus has two endings uh, based on my research. One of them is happy, I hope, and the other one is not. So you see how I am hesitating with this story. But once again, Rizzo is just magical when it comes to writing Dramani fanfiction. I have experienced that magic many, many times before and I kind of want to brace myself for this story even though I know that I am in for a lot of pain, a lot of jump scare, a lot of anxiety, but I still want to give this story a go. This story, once again, is a giant piece of work. We have a little bit more than 350,000 work in this story and 84 chapters. So I know that um, I will have enough material to go on for days just in this video. Next, we have something that I want to try this year. And you guys have to just hear me out. I don't know how to read the title, but it's a fan fiction by Dark Wings. This is a Voldemort Win alternative universe story with a sad ending. Talking about New Year resolution here, I want to try new things this year. I want to try having my heart broken in a new way. And if you guys have watched a lot of videos on my channel before, I have said it nonstop that I will not be able to do no sad ending fanfiction in here. The least I can do is some open-ended ending. But one of you guys has left a comment recommending this story and to be honest with you, it intrigued me so much that I want to be heartbroken for this story alone. This is one of the story where Hermione is kept prisoner after uh, Harry Potter fall and she used dreams in order to disassociate but once every two weeks she has to walk with Draco for a hell check and her dreams are disconnected or she has to stop dreaming. She has to stop dissociating uh, for that short period of time. <sighs> there was just going to be a lot of crying, a lot of pain, a lot of tears reading this story. But I kind of want to try having that feeling with Romani fanfiction and worst come to worst, I can only abandon the story when it becomes too much for my heart. But New Year resolution talk that is, we are going to try a sad ending story this year. It's going to be this one. Next, we have A Drift by In Dreams and this is a memory story and you guys have already known based on the video on my channel that I have a thing for memory story in Germanic fanfiction. Uh, this is a story about Draco once again unexpectedly running into Hermione but in this story, she doesn't even remember her own name. So you guys already know just by the short synopsis alone that I am hooked or you guys hooked as well because why in the hell does Hermione Granger not remembering her own name and where in the hell does Draco Malfoy fit into this story? I just gotta have to read this story. It has a little bit or close to 180,000 work, 45 chapters. So once again, I feel like I already have more than enough materials to go on for this year. But I just have a bad habit of the NFC story left and right. And so I kind of want to put a little bit more onto this list just so I have things to pick and choose from. I have heard a lot of great things about In Dreams and I myself have read and love and recommend this other story before. And so I also kind of have um, a lot of expectation for this. And I of course will update you guys on how that turns out. 
Next, we have 1000 Ways to Fall in Love by Slytherin Prince 27. And what has wrong me into this story is the synopsis. It says Draco Malfoy has never uttered the word I love you to a single woman, but he knows how Hermione Granger takes her coffee and that she can go a day without devouring a pumpkin scone. I sense that we have a pioneer is my middle name Draco in this story, and isn't that what I want to read? However, the tag for this story is glaring. I usually don't really go for that PWP type of story, but I feel like in order to build a good TBR for the year, I kind of need all the flavor, I kind of need all the taste. So for the days that I am in for that spiciness, I feel like I already have a story ready. This story though is a little bit shorter, it's probably the shortest on the list, and it's just short of 86,000 words with 20 chapters. Maybe I will be intrigued enough to, you know, just finish this story in one sitting. Who knows? Next, we have a marriage law story, and that is Remember Us as War but Cause Forgiveness by Anya Paradox. Uh, I don't think I have to explain much about this because marriage law is my favorite trope when it comes to dramatic fan fiction. I don't think I have ever read as many fiction in any other trope as I have done with marriage law stories. And I just love to see how they would navigate through that forced man's life together because we all know that they are probably the most stubborn people on this planet. And so I love to see how they overcome all the obstacles, how they love blossom, and how they come to find now who the person in front of us really is. And I just love marriage law story in that aspect. Just hats off to all of my authors in this fandom because every marriage law story that I have read has its own unique flavor has its own unique take on the whole trope and so i am just appreciating all the work that you guys have done for the fandom i look forward to read this story actually it has a little bit less of 170,000 words 39 chapters and usually with magic law story i just inhale the story uh, so i really look forward to read this story in the near future next we have a little bit more of a unique plot story and that is Haunted, Hollow, Hopeful and Cursed by Honey Overcast. This is a story where I have kind of come across the synopsis many many times and every time I am always intrigued but I never really get around to read the story and apparently Pansy is with Astoria Greengrass and um, Astoria is having some kind of blood curse issue like she has always does in dramatic fan fiction uh, and Pansy comes to Granger telling her that she's the only person who has ever survived it before. Once again, I am hooked just by the synopsis. Uh, I want to find out what is behind this story and I, I think I have always been attracted to dramatic story where they have a little bit of something else on the plot line to keep us reading apart from the romance of course we all appreciate the romance over here but um, that something else on the plot line is what keep me on my toes and keep me reading most of the time and so I am really excited to read this story actually this story is a bigger piece of work once again uh, almost 270,000 work with 56 chapters and the tags are very inviting and the characters are just up my alley so I hope that this turned out to be a good read for me this year next we have Secret and Mask by Emerald Slytherin. This is a Voldemort Green alternative universe story where Hermione is taken captive. And just by me giving you guys that synopsis and by me scouting the general public opinion on this story, I know that this is going to be painful with capital letters. I know that this story is just going to be a heartbreaker, to be a tear-jerking session. But something tell me that I have to read this story. The story is big. It has almost 466,000 words with 75 chapters. And I just know that it's going to be painful. And I just know that I will not be able to intake this story in one sitting because my little heart will not be able to do that. But who knows? I am always in for that heartbroken story. I know the ending with this story before I go in because I'm just chicken like that and I need to do research before I put it on my TBR lest I run into another sad ending story. I only need one of those for the year. <laughs> the more I read Romani fan fiction, the more I feel attached to those two idiots and the more I avoid wartime story just because of how anxious I am, how agitated I am when I read the wartime story. I am always on my toe and I always keep reading. That's a good thing but at the same time I'm always worried that something bad will happen. Every time, every moment of happiness that they have and I think, oh, some shit is about to go down because there's no way they're going to be in this bubble forever. That's my feeling whenever I read a wartime story. And so I avoid that at all costs for my mental health. But <laughs> I feel like Jermione is the most glorious 
in wartime story we need to see that enemies are lover glaring we need to see every tragic twist and turn we need to see that stolen happiness on borrowed time we are just that type of people who are in for that type of pain and i already know i kind of always anticipate that i will have a breakdown reading this story and i hope that you guys will be here for me sharing that type of emotions the last items on my TBR list, which is not really a TBR uh, because this is the work in progress that I am following and that is a Hatred 19 story that is called In the Silent Days. This is a marriage law story, can you imagine? Marriage law is my favorite trope to read when it comes to romantic fanfiction and Hatred 19 is one of my favorite authors in this fandom ever. A combination of those things will make me unhinged like this Hatred 19 Draco will never disappoint the Draco and Hatred 19 story are the Dracos that you would marry in a heartbeat given the chance or at least I am and I am protecting but I just have a really really good time reading Hatred 19 story almost all of their story has left me satisfied and love and just smitten so far and so I am so in love with this story and of course it's a work in progress that I am following she has released 10 out of the 14 chapters so far so I feel like this is a good place where you just start reading and wrapping up you know as Hatred 19 start publishing more chapters to finish the story stay tuned for more from Hatred 19 and of course it's going to be greatness and that is all of my TBR work in progress for the year 2023. I know that I have a lot of bigger pieces of work on this list. But as I said, I have a really bad habit of just DNFing story left and right. So I kind of put a lot more than I can handle on this list. Just so if I DNF a story, I always have something else to go to. I hope that this year will turn out to be a good year of reading your money fanfiction or reading in general for those of you who are watching this video. And so I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you like this video. And in the meantime, read some Giovanni fanfiction. Bye!